the Triathlon Show 314. What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of That Triathlon Show, the podcast presented by scientifictriathlon.com. I'm your host, Michael, and on today's episode, I interview coaches Helle Fredriksen, Philip Seip, and Emma Carney, and each of them will give their perspective and their recommendations on whether you should take a season break and how to go about it. Each of these coaches have previously been on the show, Helle in episode 279, Philip in episode 219, and Emma in episode 276. You can find a link to each of these episodes, as well as uh, each of the coaches' social media and websites uh, on in the episode description and on the podcast show notes page. But before we get into the interview, big thanks to our sponsors, Precision Hydration. Precision Hydration create electrolyte products that you can match to how you sweat and fueling products that make it easy for you to hit your numbers. They also provide a fantastic amount of information and education on their blog, in their newsletter and in interviews that I've done with founder Andy Blow on that triathlon show. We've covered topics such as how to fuel and hydrate to optimize performance in long races, in hot or humid conditions. We've covered how to avoid cramping, how much energy to consume and much, much more. PH also have free tools on their website like their online sweat test and their quick carb calculator and you can book a free one-on-one consultation with an expert from their team. Use the promo code DEATTRAFLONSHOW15 to get 50% off your first order on precisionhydration.com. And thank you to Roka. Roka produces exceptional quality triathlon wetsuits, trisuits, swimskins, goggles, performance sunglasses as well as prescription eyeglasses and sunglasses. If you want to go faster in the water or on the bike, a Roka wetsuit or trisuit might be for you. And today I want to talk specifically about Roka's performance sunglasses. This, this line of eyewear is made for advanced performance even in the most extreme con- conditions. The sunglasses that Roka produce are unbelievably lightweight, they have amazing optics and they cannot fall off your face thanks to the patented Geeko anti-slip technology. Personally, I love the Matador sunglasses, and uh, there is even a new version available now called the Matador Air that I'm yet to try, but there are a number of different models of sunglasses that you can consider, all with top-of-the-line design and technology. Visit roca.com forward slash TTS for 20% off your entire Roca order. Now, without any further ado, let's start with the first interview with Helle Fredriksen, coach, former pro triathlete, and to this day, the world record holder for the 7.3 distance. Welcome back to that triathlon show, Helle. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm good. How are you? I'm good, thanks. Uh, it's uh, nice to have you back on. And for listeners that haven't heard your previous interview, we'll of course have that linked in the show notes. But for today, we will discuss the season break and uh, what to do and not to do during a season break. So first of all, Helle, uh, do you recommend a season break and uh, why or why not? Yeah, absolutely. A season break, uh, even a mid-season break too. Um, Like if we just take the season break, this is and this is the time for the body and the mind to recover from the season. All the training, you know, bounce back. All the system needs to get rebooted and recovered. um, And you know, training every single day and 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 for pros multiple times a day is just not beneficial uh, for the body in the long run. Um, so we need that, we need that break also, as I said, also for the mind, it's just super important, um, just to simply just switch off from triathlon. Yeah. And what does it look like more specifically in terms of how long it is or should be and what you should and shouldn't do in it? Is it a complete break from all training or do you recommend doing some non-triathlon activities or, uh, what, what do you recommend there? Yeah, so I um, I like to to give my athletes two uh, weeks of complete rest, um, like so no swim, bike, run, preferably. Um, it's fine to do other things, so like walking and yoga and spend time with loved ones, garden work, housework, whatever, all the time, all the stuff that you normally don't have time for. But try and disconnect your sport and uh, your brain. Uh, from the sport and and your goals um just um those two weeks is just such a good resetter and just such a good like you know it's like the season is done 
you can evaluate how did it go, you know, how did the training go, where am I now in my progression. But then after that, just let it go. Just absolutely let it go. And after these two weeks, then I like to have a week where you start to get a little active again, but unstructured. Uh, but we're starting to throw in um, some training again. But it's not, you know, if you feel like going for a 15-minute run or 30-minute run, then that's fine. But I don't want people to go out and, and run long or ride long. Or, um, the, the, it's, a, it's an art for especially age groupers to um, allow themselves to relax and also don't have to think you need to train every single day. It is actually good for your longevity in the long run to let go completely. And and how long is that period where you uh, train, you, you get back into training, but you do it more unstructured and uh, with, without? So I actually just uh, give them one week of unstructured training, but then the fourth week, the training starts again, but it's very low volume and very low intensity. It's just to get back into the groove and then consistency of training again. And, and often you will find that people, you know, they get a little tired to get back into training again. So we just need to allow the body to kind of absorb, absorb it all again. Mm. Got it. And uh, are there any exceptions to the rule of two weeks completely off and, and one week of just super light unstructured training? Are there any situations where you would have the season break be longer or potentially shorter? Yeah, so like shorter if there's been many stops and goes through the season, like due to illness and and injuries and also just lack of consistency or like lack of motivation if you've had people that's just been falling in and out um, throughout the, the season, then a shorter because you the body doesn't need it as much and the mind might not need it as much because you've had small breaks. And longer if I feel the athlete really need to recalibrate and, you know, just get the sport in a distant, you know, and until I kind of feel that the motivation is coming back, you know, there is literally, there is no hurry here. Like um, very, very often you see that when people are taking the time off that is needed, even if it's a mid-season break and you see it with pros as well, they would bounce back so much stronger because their mentally is also ready to get into the game again yeah yeah uh, do, do you what what did you do personally when when you were racing professionally how how long of a break would you take yeah i would take uh, two weeks as well um of of nothing um i was running ever so slightly just a little bit because i was um if i didn't run for a period of time, I was very prone to injuries if I started up again. So I kind of needed to stay to get get a little bit of impact all the time on my on my body to kind of tolerate the, the running load. I've never been a um, a high volume runner, but everything else I completely took away. Um, so if you only need to run a couple of times a week, that's it's okay. Yeah. Um, and uh, you mentioned a couple of examples of activities that people might do like walking and yoga and things like that uh, are there any other things that you would say are good things to do if you want to do something active during your break i really just think you need to do whatever you think is fun you know have fun be with your friends and, and family and you know if you are in a warmer places water activities and even like some, if you're cold, it's cold places, skiing, hiking, you know, anything, you know, also the things often, you know, when you're in the season and you're, you're super disciplined and serious, there's a lot of activities that you don't allow yourself to do because you're afraid of getting injured. Of course, we don't want to get injured, you know, in your season break. But at the same time, you know, you can allow yourself to relax a little bit more and let go. So it's really just, you know, I, I often, if people are, you know, really like craving and have ants in their pants. I would normally say like, go for a long walk, take your wife in your hand and then out in the forest and just, you know, stuff that, that you don't have time for normally and stuff that she probably would like to do. You know, you just never have time during the season. So so try to just let your own kind of needs go and then just see what your better half actually would like to do too. Yeah, that's a great tip. And uh, then you mentioned for your personal example, um, a great 
example of when why you might do a little bit of running during a break i think one example that i've talked about a little bit is for for a lot of age group athletes it might be that they want to do just a little bit of swimming if they don't have a swimming background and feel that they lose a lot of their swimming ability just technically and uh, uh, is that something that you would, would do with some athletes or for example keep doing a little bit of swimming through the break or is, is that also a kind of a do you think that you can easily get it back uh, even even after the break yeah i think when it's only two weeks i think you can easily get it back i just really think it's it's very good uh for your mind to just completely let go of the sport and and uh, even you know if you are not coming from a swimming background or or like there are now i'm not generalizing too much but there are a lot of age groupers that don't necessarily love swimming that much so letting swimming go for two weeks is maybe kind of nice that you don't have to go to the pool and so I really allow people and and encourage people not to do two weeks is is no problem we would pick it up again fast and yeah of course I need to accept that the the first couple of weeks or three weeks it feels awful but that's just how it is and it will come back again yeah no that's a good good point uh and uh what do you say are the main differences between age groupers and, and pros in how they should treat the season break, if any, or is it the same generally across the board? Yeah, I mean, like the importance is there is no difference. Like it is as important for age groupers as it is for the pros. I would say like for the pros, they are so, so disciplined throughout the season and it's a very, very hard skill and, and it takes a lot out of you mentally and physically you know, to, to be so committed every single day and you live and breathe triathlon. So I think like pros might need that break more than, than the age groupers do. Um, and maybe they are also better at doing it because they really, really just really crave um, to just let go of that discipline and that mindset that, that we have uh, 24 seven. Uh, but, but the importance of, um, how important the off season is, is there's no difference between age groupers and and the pros and i feel like for me it's easier to um for the pros that i have to say that an off season is an off season that's like weeks off it's no problem but i there's i have quite a few age groupers where i have to explain why i would like them to take it off so i feel feel like the resistance of just completely resting is is higher with the age groupers in my yeah. in, in my experience I, I i would agree with that yeah and uh one thing that you mentioned uh earlier on was uh that you also uh, encourage a mid-season break can you talk a little bit more about uh, what that might look like and who should be taking a mid-season break yeah so i actually also uh use that throughout everyone and um, so if we have quite a few uh early season races um and we have had like a solid block of training maybe we start to introduce a race specific training maybe in february march um and we're having high intensity and maybe have two or three races already then like maybe like mid june it's a good time to just take a week of no training no no swim bike run but still be active here it's important that you keep being active and that is maybe like walking or gardening or whatever just keep having the blood flowing but just let go of swim bike run um so it's not as much rest as um, after the season but it's such a good reset and then after that you then put in like back to basis you put in like a, a good strength work again and then you build race specific uh, work on top again before you have another race block. So it really, really kind of again reboots the system, and we come back to bases and work the strength work uh, mm. before we get going again. What about if for some athletes might have a shorter racing season, like in Scandinavia, for example? If if we have athletes that don't necessarily race too much abroad, then the race season might only mm-hmm. be from june through august essentially yeah uh, would the situation be different then or, or how would you incorporate the mid-season block yeah so there i would more incorporate so like we have a week of very very low volume very low intensity so that i put in some designated rest weeks normally i don't really work so much with rest weeks i really incorporate rest throughout the every week but then we have like a designated week of very little 
training and very low intensity. So it is kind of a rest, but not like a complete um, off swim bike run. Mm, perfect. Uh, is there anything else that you would like to mention regarding uh, the, the season break or anything that we missed or, or it could be things for, regarding nutrition or body work or physiotherapy <laughs> or anything you can think of that, that might also be useful? Yeah, like I think um, if you are someone that have a very strict approach to food, um, I think it's important to try and let go of that strictness, um, especially if, if that strictness is not come natural to you. Um, so just uh, don't think about what you eat, you know, um, and, and don't have to follow these strict disciplined plan that you put for yourself. Um, but at the same time, of course, don't go nuts and put on eight kilos in two weeks. Um, but but because that's not healthy either, but for leaner athletes, it can actually be good. Um, to actually gain a little bit um, so that when you are starting your off-season training, you have a little bit more mass for the strength-based work um, so that you can actually gain a bit of muscle mass. Um, so there are many lean pros that where it's really good for them to actually gain a bit of weight in this period to carry through the winter. It will make you way more resilient or robust. And the same for, for, for many age groupers. So just let go if you're very strict um, um, to the approach to food. Um, and then I will say that when you return to your off-season and training again, that is when I think you should start to think about um, all these things of, uh, you know, body work. Is, is there things that you need to incorporate into your your routine? Like, is there things you want to get better at, like aerodynamics? Um, things, you know, changes that you thought of, like, but for like pros and stuff, I would really encourage them to those two weeks, just let go. And like, even like sponsor work, don't start to sit and do admin work 24 seven after your last race, just let go for two weeks and then you start again. Um, instead of like, so then you can really, you know, get that mind away from the sport because we live and breathe it and um, it can sometimes be super intense. Yeah, definitely, and the the brain is such an important part of of the body. And and I mean, if if you have the brain engaged in the sport, in, even just through admin work, then uh, that in itself can be uh, a cause of a stress response uh, physically in your body as well. So, yeah, exactly. so that makes total sense. Yeah, and and we do have to to you know we do our sponsor work uh, and and of course uh, do the exposure and 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 we are promoting a lot of uh, amazing brands, but. Um, and, and we do that throughout the season as well. And it, and it, it can be a stressful things, but that is, you know, that is the life of a pro triathlete. So therefore these two weeks is just give you, do yourself a favor. Also let the, the, your current sponsors know that I am taking off <laughs> from mother earth for two weeks. Do not contact me. Kind of like, just say like, I need this, um, you know, these two weeks and it's, it's, it, it's, it's healthy for everyone, I think. Yeah, yeah. Use an email order responder. Uh, that, yeah, that works well. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you so much, Helen. This was uh, really nice to have this discussion and uh, lots of great points. Uh, so, yeah, we'll talk to you again soon. Next up is Philip Seip, coach of top athletes like Laura Philip, Sebastian Kienle, Florian Angert, and others, and founder of the coaching business Kickass Sports. Welcome back to that triathlon show, Philip. How are you doing? Very good. Thank you for the invitation. Um, great to see you again. Great, great to ch chat to you again as well. Uh, today's topic that we're going to discuss is uh, the season break. So let's just jump right in with <laughs> the main question. Do you recommend taking a season break uh, or not? And if you do, uh, why or why not, I guess? Uh, yes, I recommend a season break. And... I recommend holidays and I, I, and I think, um, yeah, even if you love sports, you have to, to stop at some time to get, to have a deeper recovery from it. And, um, it's, it's maybe like a newspaper. You, if you love it every day, you, you have to put it uh, away for some time and, um, uh, to, to learn again how you love it maybe. And on the other hand, you have to, to give your body a real rest. Um, if you have a demanding training. 
Yeah. What specifically would the season break look like for you? Like how long would it normally be? And and would you allow some sort of maybe alternative activities, uh, physical activities, or or would you really focus on on a lot of rest? And uh, yeah, can you, we can start there and then dump, jump into some special cases, perhaps? Um, yeah, the answer is it depends on um and it depends on what you did before and if you had a like a super intense block that like let's say um preparation for a world championship race and you you build up like uh physiological pressure but um psych psychological pressure as well um then i think you need a release and on the one hand the race is the release with the stop yeah it's a big release um but then you need time to recover And, um, yeah, the, the big question is how fast can you get to the point where you really recover? Um, I, I think many people need, like when I start holidays, I need two or three days to get into my holidays to, to get rid of all these thoughts and, um, all the stuff you're collecting from your everyday life. And, um, yeah, so, uh, this, this, um, shows what you need in it. And then, then there are some, yeah processes like psychological and physiological processes in your body uh to recover and um yeah this this simply needs time to work and and how how, how much time would you would you say and, and we can talk, take two two simple scenarios a pro triathlete uh, you coach quite a few of them or an age group triathlete um i i think a pro triathlete league needs a s systematic break of let's say two weeks per year like like a like a proper holiday yeah yeah and and is, is that the same for an age gripper or would you say that it, is it any different um i i think it de like the same it depends on um if you're you're able to have like holidays like real time off um then two weeks are enough to recover Uh, on the other hand, it's like more to get out of the super structured, like getting up at six to reach the early swim times and, um, yeah, maybe have a less structured, easier life. Um, and, um, the other thing is if you start your season break, maybe with a little injury, I would recommend to have it maybe a little longer to get rid of all this stuff. Um, so it depends on the goal you have um but i think it's similar like the the goal you have is like to to get rid of the stress or to get rid of like your routines for a while um and yeah i think two weeks are needed um more can be nice um but yeah i think most of the or most of us like sportsmen um they they really need the the sport and maybe you start less focused more like more playful like with not strict interval routines or something like that um yeah or with different sports like alternative sports um to show your body different movement patterns um this can be nice to to have a nice break in the winter yeah uh, well we've seen uh Laura Philip, your wife and who you coach, has done quite a bit of skiing. I think uh, we've seen on so on her social media. So, uh, is that a good example of something that you think is is a good good way of getting back into your season after the season break? Oh, the, to be honest, this was a training camp, and this was no off season. So, um, we we decided to have a different training, and I think, like for example, cross country skiing, ski mountaineering. Um, or like just inline skating or uh, doing cross country skiing on the road um, is a really nice different movement from like this sitting on a bike, and so so we decided um, to have a yeah bigger reservoir of movement pattern, um, and this is the same ask why I want Laura to ride the mountain bike or yeah because when we are training day in day out. Uh, yeah, on the time trial bike, you, you will simply get weaker on it. So, yeah, it, I yeah. want to have a wide range of motion um, over different sports uh, from Laura. Okay, yeah, got it. When we're talking about the the two weeks or however many weeks it is, the, the break, the, the season break, what, what do you think, what type of activity, if any, is allowed or recommended there do you like your athletes to really just take it easy and, and maybe not be so physically active or or do you think that they can do 
different things like tennis or uh, five-a-side football or, or whatever or yeah what's your thoughts on that um we we talk, talk uh, always talk about like um move but don't train uh from my side i would be careful to give me a ball or give me uh, let me play tennis because i i think like getting into an athletic sport like this i would be too competitive to do this during off season um but like going for going hiking um or just enjoy a little swim yeah uh, but no pressure like training in it uh is okay and yeah j to have an active lifestyle is easy but no, not this focused training like we do usually yeah no, that, that makes sense yeah. uh, do, do you treat the different disciplines differently swimming biking and running like would you for example with some athletes maybe take a longer break from from running or cycling than than from swimming or or are they all really the same uh, to you uh, unless the athlete is carrying an injury of course um i think i treat them the same um I think that it, the the only thing what is interesting is um the different athletes like there are some athletes I have to give them a wake up call to get back to training um to come back from watching TV or just laying on the uh on the back and others I have to even to tell them to have a real rest. Yeah. <laughs> other than the things we already mentioned that some of the things that are quite similar between age groupers and pros are, are there any any other things that or any things that you think are where, there, where you do find differences uh that we haven't mentioned yet no i don't think so that there are big differences um like we have different amount of training this is logical um we have a yeah let's say if you have a real two weeks time off um, with like holidays or you still have to work 40 hours uh, a week this this is a different break yeah? Yeah. um and um yeah so there are small differences but in the end it's, it's still a sport it's the same sport and um i would yeah get in more playful after the break um to have like easy trainings um more focus on skills this this is what i think is a nice transition in winter to get back into it yeah and get back into it and, and do yeah. play playful training focusing on skills a lot yeah. it's, and, it's and more and like a turning point in like if you want to switch and um if you start like the biggest interest or the biggest point is to start after a successful season to have a time off and to have no new goals for example to to get faster, to lose weight, to gain muscle mask, mass, um, whatever your goal is. And then you start with it where, and you set the basement at the beginning. And um, for example, the last eight weeks before a race, to be honest, I don't work very intense on movement patterns or um, improvement in hip strength or whatever. And so this is a, like a turning point in the year where, where you can readjust, you can set new goals where you can uh work in detail this this is super interesting and for me as a coach i, I think this time um is a time in, in the year i really like and because it's like a downtime and i have the chance to speak to every athlete um is in a longer context um and to build new traction new formats to establish different stuff uh to make a step back and to have a look at the year uh, yeah because i think the the hard or the, the, the like i think it's a definition of madness is it's like trying to reach the goals doing the same over and over again so uh yeah so it, it's the transition time to have something yeah. different yeah and and would you so so would you do work would you work with your athletes for example on setting goals planning the season during the break or would you actually want them to have no, the two weeks, we're not thinking about the sport. We're taking a mental break as well. And then after that, we get back and we start thinking about the goals and we start training at the same time. Basically, would you like the season break to be a mental break as well as a physical break from, from the sport? 100%. For example, now Florian uh, raced Mallorca and then he had his time off. 
then he started i think his training last monday again like three days again uh, ago and today uh, no it's not three five days ago and uh today he visited me and to talk about next year perspective etc so yeah. um for sure we don't talk about next goals in the season break yeah yeah makes sense Uh, is there anything else uh, that you would like to mention? Is, is there anything else to think about regarding, for example, uh, nutrition or rest and recovery, uh, body work and rehabilitation, uh, anything that, that can be important points regarding what the season break? No, I, I think the nutrition stuff is more like if you have a good habit in your everyday life, then uh, it's there. there's nothing to change in season break. So you're looking for a good nutrition all year long and um i think there's something wrong if you get to to your off season and uh you completely switch your nutrition hmm. yeah yeah that's, that's a good perspective yeah. uh all right well thank you so much uh philip uh this was great and i look forward to talking to you next time thank you And finally, we have Emma Carney, double ITU world champion in her racing days and now a coach and an author of the book Hardwired Life, Death and Triathlon. Welcome back to That Triathlon Show, Emma. How are you doing? Very good. Still in lockdown in Australia, but I'm still going okay. That's good to hear. And uh, thank you for taking the time to uh, to doing this interview. Uh, I think it's uh, well, it's very topical, of course, this time of year in the Northern Hemisphere anyway, maybe not so much in Australia, but to talk about season breaks. And uh, so I want to hear your opinions on, on that. Uh, first of all, do you recommend the season break and why or why not? I think it's really interesting. Um, as with all coaching questions, it's it's always, it's not black and white. So I do agree with a season break, but it also depends on your season. So, for example, um, if you've had a season of recent time where there's been, um, you know, sort of interrupted uh, racing and things like that, that the break may be, need to be a little bit shorter because you're going to head into um, more racing hopefully in 2022. Um, and also down in the Southern Hemisphere, the season break is quite difficult because traditionally that is when um, – you know, it's the international season rest and we start our domestic season. So I do recommend a season break. I, I, um, yeah, but it does depend on your season. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's an interesting point for, for athletes competing internationally in the Southern Hemisphere. It gets really tricky. I think that for age groupers, it's maybe less so if they race mostly domestically than, then they can just have a season break in your Australian winter, for example. But yep. for athletes who, who are competing at the at, in World Cups and uh, WTCS races and so on, uh, yeah, it, <laughs> it's challenging. How did you, out of curiosity, how did you solve that when, when you were competing actively? So the season break used to, so we'd race, obviously, the international season, which was around sort of um, May, April, May, till about um, mid-November. Um, and then I'd have sort of freed up training time up to Christmas. And then once Christmas had passed, there'd be, um, you know, get back into training and the first couple of races are done a little bit undertrained, but you just need that break. Your body needs the break. The mind needs the break. And you also need to catch up on sponsors and things like that. So just not having the structure, not having, um, the early starts and things was, was really beneficial. Yeah. So what then would you say that if somebody has a season break, what, what might it look like? So how long would it be? And uh, would it be completely off exercise or maybe gradually easing into exercise? Can you give some thoughts on that and maybe some examples? I think it, it depends on the athlete as well. I think it de and depends on the person. So I, I actually enjoy training and I don't find it um, – I don't find it a chore, so I, I I do like to train, but I also know that you know I um well I'm having my fifth I'm recovering from my fifth Achilles operation right now, so you know that's um 50 years old and I'm still getting injured, so it is an injury prevention thing, and it's also that mind um, giving your mind a break. I remember when I was racing, I was racing with Simon Lessing, and he always used to talk about his end of season break was always six weeks. And he'd go hiking and he'd do completely not swimming, biking and running. Um, I never took a break that big 
or that long. Um, I would take a maximum of two weeks off. Then I would have about two to three weeks of unstructured training. But I would still force myself uh, to swim quite regularly because that wasn't my natural discipline. And I always, I've always enjoyed running. So I would say for me it was a two-week max break, but for other athletes, you know, they had the full six weeks. Yeah. What, what do you generally see in, in age groupers that you, that you coach and work with, uh, maybe age groupers that are competing domestically and, and doing half and full Ironmans? What, what is a general trend there? Well, I, age groupers have also got to juggle their families and their lives and their jobs. And I think it's really important um, because when they are doing that dedicated training to their events, that they do have that um, that break from training and, you know, their family and their actual life away from triathlon does become the priority. And I think that's the balance that age groupers have to really, really juggle. So I, I think it's the same, you know, maybe um, two two weeks off, four weeks off or whatever they've negotiated with their partner. <laughs> or their family <laughs> um but i i do think active rest is is good so you might not you know do your 20k run on a sunday but i i think it's you know you should probably start to sort of after a couple of weeks start to think about okay i'll go for a 20 minute jog twice a week just to maintain the conditioning of your calves and just to maintain the the slight conditioning that you need once you do start training Because the older you get, and I'm at that age now, you you just start to break down if you don't have that consistency. Yeah, yeah. Um, interesting uh, sort of new new research from from the football and uh, team or soccer and team sports uh, area is actually in terms of the protecting players from injuries there there's quite a lot of good research there now that they actually need to play games because a lot of times supporters get really anxious about this and that player is playing too many games but but the people in the know are saying that well actually they need to play those games because otherwise they will get injured so so that kind of yeah. uh, is a an analogy to what you were saying there um yeah and and in terms of the let's say you have the two weeks that are kind of completely off from swim bike and run what do you recommend to do there would, would that be would, would you recommend still doing something active like hiking or walking or something completely different but not or do you really think or do you think that it makes sense to like actually just rest as much as you possibly can during those two weeks because you have put in a hard year of training and racing yeah i, I think if you enjoy hiking and things like that do it but if you're doing if you're going out for a hike because you think okay i'm missing my run so i'm going to go and smash myself and hike for four hours that's not the good thing to do. So that for that two week window I always gave to my sponsors and you know they knew that 12 months out okay this is the time when I can do a lot of my commitments this is when I can um <clears throat> turn up to certain things and so that was my time was sort of taken by that and then I started to filter that down um but I I have to admit I you know I would I'd like to take the dog for a walk or I'd like to do something. But it's if you enjoy yeah. it, as long as it's not a chore. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's there's a big difference between taking the dog for a walk and a four-hour <laughs> hike. <laughs> yeah. And also if you've got any injuries, you know, you've got to really treat them and you've got to take the time to get rid of them. Um, I can't really think of a, a season where I've finished and my body didn't need some sort of repair, as in some sort of time to just – get rid of a niggle of some sort so yeah mm. yep uh, and you mentioned already an interesting aspect of how the different disciplines might be phased in slightly differently with you not wanting to take too long of a break from swimming because it wasn't a natural discipline and i think that's something that well i can certainly relate to and i think a lot of people can uh is that something that you uh, implement a lot with age groupers you're working with and are there any other aspects to think about regarding how the different disciplines might be might be phased back into training differently depending yeah. on your strengths and weaknesses and so on Well, I think coming back into your discipline, so you've had your, you know, your break, however length of time it is, and you know, you you start to introduce your swimming, and you spend a lot of time on drills and technique and skill, and you know, a lot of that sort of filming and understanding and making sure that it's not rushed, and that, you know, you might even spend a lot of time with your fins on, so that you, it's it's not such a um, 
a heavy load on the body, but it's still having those movement patterns and reintroducing them. Um, the bike to me always came fairly quickly. So I could actually, I could take some, you know, I could take four weeks off the bike and I would still not lose too much. And the running, the reason why I would start to bring that in after a couple of weeks was I just think the consistency of running is the key to running well and the consistency and the conditioning around the legs and um, that sort of, I mean, I did a lot of running on trails, so it was not concrete and, you know, not running on roads, not that real destructive stuff, but just, you know, 30-minute runs, um, not big volumes, but just that regular conditioning of the legs. Mm. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Uh, and, uh, well, what are the different moderating factors in terms of how long the break should be uh, for for whom should it be maybe l- quite a bit longer than the two weeks we've been talking about and for whom might it be is, is there any situation where you would recommend it being shorter or no break at all uh, can you talk a little bit about the variation in in lengths of the season break that we might see well I think I mean looking at the elite level it, there might be a period when you can't really afford to have a big break because you've got Um, a major games coming up and you've got the final weeks or the months of selection so you need to maintain a level of fitness so that you can go into the um, opening of the season in good shape so that might be a situation where you don't have a big break and the the break would be planned for after selection or after those performances and then you know you get back stuck in for the main um, competition Um, other times when you might not take much of a break is if your season was interrupted by injury So you might have had a long block or a long period in the season where you missed because you had an injury and you've only really just got yourself going. It's got to the end of the season. Um, You don't really want to take another break. You just have a little bit of downtime um, and then sort of get stuck back in. So there's all those varying factors. There might be, I mean, even, you know, with these lockdowns and how we've had to sort of races on, races off, races on, races off, um, you know, a race might suddenly become available and it might be in mid-December and you, you can't sit there and go, no, no, I always take the first two weeks of December off so I'm going to do it this time. You know, you train up to it. So those sort of varying factors. But with regards to like say you had a normal season um, and you're an elite athlete, how long should you take? It does depend on the individual. Um, so, you know, like I said, Simon Lessing, um, he would take six weeks off every year and I would I, I would struggle with two because I actually enjoyed continuing on. So it's, it's it does come down to a very personal thing as well. Mm. And what about for age groupers? Are there some age groupers you think that would benefit from a longer break than, than two weeks, going up to three, four, five, six weeks? Or do you think that uh, it becomes too long uh, and, and that it's more so certain elite athletes that might benefit from a longer break like that? Um, age groupers, it depends on their life and it depends on their lifestyle. So if, you know, quite often I, if I say to um, an age grouper, okay, can you take this time off? You know, that might be in a period of time where in their work life, they don't have a lot of work hours. And so they could actually train quite well in that period. Um, so it, the, the training has to fit their life as well. Um, but I do, I do. I do think that it should be there should be a break at, at some stage, and it, it should fit in to maximise the benefit of that break. So it maximises, you know, family time, work time, whatever c- commitments they have outside of triathlon and training, so that you know when they do get get knuckled down to it, they feel refreshed in every way. Mm. So perhaps it doesn't have to be an end of season break per se. It could be a break that fits in with let's say, two weeks after their first out of yeah. two Ironmans of the season and then they can spend time with family yeah. and recover yeah. from the race. Yeah, I, I definitely think after an Ironman um, they owe a lot of credits back to the family <laughs> because yeah. they've just done all that training. So that's that's a big one. You know, they might um, – and then, you know, that planned um, build-up of training back into the next event. I'm not a, not a big fan of someone coming up to me and saying, okay, in six weeks' time I'd like to do an Ironman. I'm like, whoa, okay, I can't, you know, <laughs> that's a bit soon. But yeah. yeah. 
Uh, is there anything else uh, that uh, you would like to mention? Any other advice you have with regard to, to the season break? Uh, any recommendations for what to do and what not to do? Well, I think it's really um, the season break, you know, um, coming back into training and things like that. You can come back in with purely strength and conditioning. So you can um, come back in and, and rather than start running, you could skip with a rope. And you could just do 10 minutes or 45 seconds of skipping, um, 15 seconds of rest. And that's really going to tune the legs in and get the legs going and, and, and get yourself um, conditioned again, but you're not actually running. So you can take, you know, your two weeks complete break and then you can take two weeks of using other exercises to prepare you to get back into training. So there's lots of, you know, in the strength and conditioning things of even the body weight exercises, push-ups, dips, um, circuits, all that stuff is really, really useful too. And it, it does give you a, a bit longer of an extended break from the swim, bike, run, um, but gets you back, back into things, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, that's that's excellent advice. Uh, thank you so much, Emma. That, that was all the questions I had on the season break. Uh, yes, yeah, so I hope that your recovery from the Achilles <laughs> surgery goes well, and we'll talk thank to you, you. soon. <laughs> Thanks. I hope that you enjoyed that episode and those interviews. As always, you can find the show notes on scientifictriathlon.com with, as I mentioned, links to each of my guests' previous appearances on that triathlon show and their social media and websites. If you're looking for a coach for next year, now is a great time to start. You might already have had your season break, as we discussed in this episode. So if you have, then you're fresh and ready to go, ready to make some big training gains over the winter before a successful racing season in the summer. We believe that we have some of the best coaching available. So check out scientifictriathlon.com, how our coaching works, and email me to learn more if you're interested. Next Monday on the podcast, I interview coach John Green, who is a running coach and a runner himself. Notably, he coaches Molly Seidel, Olympic marathon bronze medalist in Tokyo, and just recently fourth place at the New York City Marathon as the first American and a new American course record holder beating Kara Goucher's previous record. In the interview with John, we will discuss his general coaching and training philosophy in depth, but we will also go into how Molly prepared for the bronze medal performance at the Olympics in Tokyo. Big thanks finally to our sponsors, Precision Hydration. Go and check out Precision Hydration's electrolyte products and energy products on precisionhydration.com and use their free online sweat test to get a personalized hydration strategy for your next race. You can get 15% off your first order with the promo code DEATTRIATHLONSHOW15. And a big thank you to Roka. Check out Roka's wetsuits, dry suits, swim skins, goggles, high performance eyewear, and prescription glasses and sunglasses, and get 20% off your entire Roka order with the promo code that you can get on roka.com forward slash TTS. Thank you, as always, for listening. Keep training smart and keep loving triathlon.